one thing I wanted to show you on the startup of FreeCAD. If we just uh, get my FreeCAD going, I have two versions of FreeCAD on this computer. I have FreeCAD 18 and this is FreeCAD 19. 19 is the development version, but I've been using it a little while and it seems pretty stable, so I'm quite happy with it. So everything I do in this should be applicable to FreeCAD 18, but it's definitely applicable to FreeCAD 19. So first things first, we're going to fire it up. And if you look at the way my system fires up now, um, I have set the default so that it will load up into part design as a fusion guy. Uh, part design workbench is pretty much as close to the design workbench in fusion as you can get. To set up the path or the um, path design to come up as a default when you start FreeCAD, what you do is you go to Edit, Preferences, and then inside the Preferences, you'll see a Startup. It's on the General tab, and it's a Startup, and you can pick your workbench here. And you can have the splash screen come on or not, but that's the spot where you, you pick which bench you want to come up as you start. So I bring mine up in part design. As I said, that's most akin to design in Fusion. The other thing I want to show you guys is, so I don't have anything open right now. What you'd normally do is you'd start a new one, but I have a little macro that I've written. If I hit that guy, it will automatically create a part, creates a body. Asked me to save my part, which I have to get good at because sometimes I get so far down the line, haven't saved it, something happens, boom, we've lost it. So I'm going to save it as that, but it also opens a sketch in the XY plane because 99% of the time when I do something, I am sketching in the XY plane. So one other thing I wanted to show you, if you want to make a shape, basically in the sketcher, you don't have the ability to dimension as you go, but don't worry about that. So if we're doing a, a square rectangle, for instance, when I pull out in Fusion, I'd normally get two dimensions, the, the height and the width that I can put in as I go. But in FreeCAD, just don't worry about it. Just rough out the shape that you want. For instance, if I wanted to do a T shape, I could do two of these guys like this. And then what I would do is I would just use this trim and trim those back so that I have the T shape that I wanted. And then you don't even have to dimension it. You can just go with a rough idea just to get the shape. Um, one thing that you will have to have is closed uh, parts, but these should all be closed because I drew them as, as uh, rectangles. So if I close the sketch, I should be able to immediately go and pad that sketch. And let me just fit everything to the window. And there you go. So I've already got a shape. It's all just all um, basic. And then I can come back in here, go back into the sketch. And now if I decide I can, I can start to make this um, something sensible. One thing I've noticed with FreeCAD is it's actually quite advantageous if you use the constraint, which is symmetry. So if I select two points and then I select an axis, hit symmetry. Now that line is symmetrical around this axis. You can do the same thing. Two points and an axis, boom, we have our symmetry. And now, I can dimension the thing. So I can go into a dimension. I can say I want that guy. I can see what it roughly was. So I can say that should probably be 60. And now I can just start dimensioning all of this. So very easy to constraints. The symmetry makes it easy from uh, um, constraining the whole model. But once more, I don't have to constrain it all if I don't want to. Um, the other thing you can do, if you have um, if you have a circle or some kind of cutout in this shape, if you just include it into the sketch, 
close that up. Now you see it's just all the way through. Of course, that's only good if you're doing all the way through stuff, but just to give you some ideas on that. One other thing I found very handy is if I go back into that sketch, if I had, for instance, two circles here, and I want them to be in line this way on a common axis, I can pick this guy, pick this guy, tell it it's vertical, and now I know they're completely lined up. Um, what I also do is I pick, when I've got multiple holes, I'll generally pick one and make that my um, datum hole. So if, assuming these are all the same, I'll pick this one, I'll tell it it's 20, then I'll pick this guy, pick this guy, and I'll tell them that they're the same. And now those two holes are in line this way, and they're the same diameter. So I can obviously move this hole a bit closer if I want to, or I could even set them up to be symmetrical. Now this guy, the one I drew here, is actually because of this constraint is stuck on that line. So I, what I'd have to do if I want to take that off there is I have to get rid of that constraint there. Um, so right now it's not going to move off there, but if I do move this one left and right, the other guy is going to go left and right. So close that, you'll see there's two holes. Now one other thing, if I want to create a new sketch, so I can say let's create a sketch on this face, and I want to create that sketch. Now I want to put a hole, uh, you know, I'm going to create a pad that goes around this hole. So the way to do that is I can include that geometry with this little weird looking thing here. Grab that, I include that geometry, include that geometry. Now look, I've got a center point and um, just in case you're not sure, the way this, these tools, all of these tools work is they stay active until you click the right button and then that turns them off. So just so you know that that works that way. Now I can pick that center point and now I have a concentric circle. And so I can do two concentric circles, for instance, on each one. And I can make myself a pad there. Do it that way. I'm going to dimension one. And you can dimension radiuses or you can dimension um, diameters. If you drop this guy down, it's a diameter at that point. So then I can say that one's going to be 52. So that makes me a very small ridge around there. And then, of course, I can say that guy and that guy are the same. And I can say this inner guy and this inner guy are the same. Now I've got two of those exactly the same. Um, apparently I have too many constraints here, so I'm going to fix that. But let's have a look. Let me just see. Sketch constraints, conflicting constraints. So it doesn't love... Oh, because I told it was equal to this one. So <laughs> I got to delete. I have to delete those dimensions. And away we go. And close that. And then from this sketch, I can create myself a pad. And there you have it, a little wraparounds on there. So the concentricity part is obviously important because it's something you're going to want to do a lot. So including those, um, including those features, giving you the center point is great from a you know, CAD point of view. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've got plenty more tips coming. I actually made enough to make a 25 minute video. So I'm going to break it up into three and the next one should be coming next week. So if you like this, please subscribe, like the video and I'll see you in the next one.